Hello, hello everyone. My name is Tommaso Aste, and uh, let me say that I'm very glad to talk uh, uh, at this uh, satellite of NELSAI. And I would say I will be even happier to be in Rome now, but uh, I'm uh, uh, super excited anyway to be part of this remote uh, um, part of the conference. Okay, today I will talk about data-driven modeling of socioeconomic system with the network. And let me first introduce myself. I am, as I said, Thomas Waste. I am the head of a relatively large group at the University College London. And we research at the interface between technology and finance and socioeconomic systems. And our topics are data-driven modeling, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and all the aspects related to computational and mathematical modeling of complex systems and in particular socioeconomic systems. So what I mean with data-driven modeling? Well, what I mean is just the fact that we want to model a system, a complex system in particular, and we want to do that without the um, without previous knowledge, a previous model of the system, but finding the laws that govern the system directly from the data. And uh, uh, Complex systems are complex and so they are difficult to model. I think we can define complexity exactly from the fact that these systems are difficult to model, so there is a lot to be done. And a characteristic of complex systems, of all complex systems, is they have a large number of variables. These variables are interacting non-linearly with each other. And, uh, um, and this makes the system, as I said, very hard to model. Actually, indeed, uh, I mean, uh, um, this is the definition of complexity. And uh, uh, complex systems are, the variable in complex systems are stochastics, uh, stochastic, and therefore the modeling of a complex system must be, should be a probabilistic model. And, uh, uh, and in particular, especially for what I'm talking about and for the system I am interested in, we, the model is the computation, the full model is the computation of a joint probability distribution function. And for instance, I mean, in terms of application or just to relate it to something practical, well, when I'm talking about stress testing, stress testing, of course, is a, is a very important uh, practice in, uh, in macroeconomic and in prudential policies, then uh, uh, what we are talking about is a conditional probability. The probability that A happens when I stress B to some level. And uh, uh, analogously, if we are talking about uh, risk management, well, again, we are talking about the probability, a probability of portfolio returns, uh, negative returns in particular, and risks of various kinds like volatility, given some market conditions. And uh, again, I mean, if the market conditions are not the present market condition, but are the, uh, well, actually, if the market conditions are the present, but actually want to calculate the, the future returns or the future risk, then these, uh, um, these uh, uh, conditional probability becomes an operation of forecasting. In general, when we are doing data-driven modeling, the process we are doing is the following. We start from the data, we build the from the data model, this model generates a prediction, and we look whether this prediction is consistent with the data themselves. And then eventually we go around, of course, I mean, data system, uh, data, uh, data scientists will teach us that if we go around too much, we are doing overfitting. However, we go around and we make a model that better predicts our data. And by the way, this is uh, not something new. This is what for a few hundred years we've been calling the scientific method. And uh, there are quite a few issues when this method is applied to complex system. And let me see, I, I let me list uh, the few of them. Well, the first one is what is often called the curse of dimensionality. 
or that means that I mean, if uh, I increase the number of variables with that I use to describe the system, so I increase, I increase this n, well, the complexity of my model, so essentially the number of parameters in my model, does not increase with n, it increases with at least n square. Actually, it can go all the way to n factorial and becoming uh, um, combinatorial, combinatorially la large. And this is a huge problem and it's to some extent an intrinsic contradiction. I add variable to better describe the system to have larger information on the system. However, this makes my system more, uh, my model more complex and less easy to handle and less easy to solve, less easy to find the right parameters for the system. Then the second problem in these systems is that, as I said, there are a large number of variables, there are a large number of parameters, and uh, the error, the way in which the error propagate, and this is typical propagation error, is the fact that the least uh, uh, robust, the, the most uncertain variable is the one that determine the precision and the uh, ability of the model to describe the system. The occurrence of the system is determined by the most uncertain data. And of course, a priori, we don't know which are the more reliable, the more uncertain, we don't, we don't know which are the one that describe best, that describe worst. So the operation to select is very complicated and length and sometimes impossible. And finally, and uh, we have been uh, listening a lot in this last uh, period, in the last few years, about interpretability. And I would say, actually, the problem is much broader than that. It has, it has to do with complexity and with nonlinearity. Indeed, when we have a, many, a large number of variables that are interacting in a linear way, then the problem that we are solving, the problem we are solving is an inverse problem, starting from the data and finding the model. Well, if the system is non-linear, we don't have only one solution. We have a combinatorically large number of solutions. And the problem is that all these solutions are equivalent. And uh, even if they are equivalent, however, they can be completely different one from the other. So, I mean, the problem of interpretation is the problem to understand, well, what this solution means and what this different solution means. Are these different systems, are these completely different ways of describing the system? Actually, as a matter of fact, a complex system can be described in many different ways. All these ways can be completely equivalent in terms of occurrence. Okay, so, and now, I mean, this is what we are, uh, the topic of this conference is, uh, okay, can we, um, where network come in? Well, my, uh, what, uh, my point is network are solving these problems, or at least are a solution for these issues. And in particular, they solve the problem of course of dimensionality by introducing sparse network, which reduce the number of parameters to order n from order n square or larger. They can solve the error propagation problem because uh, the um, model construction can be done locally, so on a small number of variables and then extended globally through the network, and that can solve the, the interpretability problem because sparse network are easy to interpret, are easy to see and to analyze. Of course, I mean, we are dealing with complex systems, so this is not the only possible solution, this is one of the solutions. And today I will show how to build a probabilistic model by using network. Example in the literature are already abundant and indeed, I mean, all what is what are called the correlation network that we have seen in this conference and in previous conference quite a lot uh, are part of this uh, um, kind of approach. However, what I will show you is an extension of this which is the uh, which I which we call information filtering network so they are generalized kind of correlation filtering network but more importantly I will discuss how to use how to build networks that are suitable for probabilistic modeling 
First of all, well, the structure of this network, the correlate, this is an example of correlation network, actually information filtering network is a planar graph, a PMFG method. They are meaningful. I mean, we know that their structure is related to known um, property of the network. And this is very important. Not only that, they are useful or they can be useful. For instance, this is an example of a paper where we are showing that different position in the network have different uh, properties in terms of risk. But then what I said is the important part of this talk is how to build a network that are useful for modeling, for probabilistic modeling of the system. And in particular, if we want to build a probability over a network, the network must have some properties. And one of the property is to be a network of click. Okay, in this in particular to be a click forest and or in another definition to be a chordal graph. So first of all, let me introduce how to build a chordal graph in a, with the philosophy similar to the way we were building a correlation network and uh, uh, information filtering networks. And uh, this is what I call the um, click expansion operation. It's kind of simple. One start from a click, and the click can be also a single node. And step by step, it adds one node to the click. And uh, I mean, I didn't start from a single node because there is uh, some, uh, some uh, um, extra possibility in the operation. I might add this node to one single node. I, may, I add it to a sub click or my add it to the entire click, okay? Or I might not add it at all. And I start, so I pass from, in this case, from one click to something which is a tree made of two click, click one, and three click, click two, and we go on and on like this. How uh, we decide to build this network? Well, we decide to do, sorry, we decide to build the network by using a criteria, a gain, gain function, and for what we have, we have explored, the best gain so far we have been using is the R square. Okay, R square is can be applied to any model, linear, nonlinear, and uh, it turns out to be an extremely good measure for um, as a gain function. Um, of course, I mean, one is not limited to that. It depends on the application and on the kind of data. Um, what we want to build to connect are the most related variables. So the one that best explains, so with larger R squared, that best explain the other variable. However, in some cases, we want to build network just doing the exact opposite. So to build the least related. This, of course, will help us, for instance, to generate some um, um, some clustering and some uh, other things. Then what we do, well, I said that this is uh, related to the uh, probabilistic modeling. Uh, and uh, uh, well, uh, this is strictly speaking true only for Gaussian, multivariate Gaussian. However, so this, this little part, uh, sorry, uh, no, this is, this, uh, this is, I said something stupid. This is what I'm saying is very general. What we have is that if two variables of two set of variables, so it can be the two clicks before this took this click and the second click uh, on the other side. If these two click are not dependent one from the other, so if the variables X and Y of these two click are not dependent one from the other, then their joint probability or also their, their conditional joint probability is given by the product of the two marginal, of the two joints of the two groups. On the other hand, if they are dependent from each other, this is not true. And when we do a graphical modeling of my system, so when I build my network, I will put the link if and only if this condition is satisfied. So if it is different, if they are equal, then I don't put the link. And this is the way in which I connect probability with the um, with uh, uh, networks. And as I said before, sorry, this was referred to that uh, slide, not the one before. If we have a linear modeling, which means if we are modeling the system with 
a multivariate uh, Gaussian distribution, then there is a stronger link to that is that when there is the link, the inverse covariance, so this object here is uh, as, sorry, the inverse covariance as a um, different from zero entry. If the, uh, there is no link, then the inverse covariance has a zero entry. So this method is a method to build also sparse inverse covariances, which is what Lasso does, but it does it in a completely different way. As I said, this is valid for linear modeling. Instead, this is valid for any kind of model. And uh, again, for any kind of modeling, we have a beautiful way to combine local properties to global properties. Remember, we have a click forest, so we have a set of clicks connected through subclicks. The subclicks are called separators, and these are the clicks. And what we have, we have this formula, which is very general because it depends, it is a one of the instances of the bias theorem that tells us that the joint probability of the entire system, here we might have thousands of variables, is given by the product of the joint probability of the clicks. So clicks typically are small. I mean, in a spanning tree are two variables. In the, in the example I will give you are four variables. So they are tetrahedras, can be, I mean, larger, but typically you stop at 10 or something. And then you do the product of this joint probability distribution. So probability distribution determined on small uh, size click. So at low dimensionality, then you divide for object for uh, probability that are even lower dimensionality that are anyway are, are the um, marginal of this. So these are uh, automatic computed because I mean, there is double counting in these interfaces on the, um, on the separators and this generate the entire probability distribution. So we can move from a local description to a global description. And this solves the problem of the curse of dimensionality. The problem we are solving is always low dimensional. And then, so what we do, the process is the following. We first build the information filtering network. For instance, by using the click expansion algorithm, it should be cordial, it must be cordial. And then we generate a multivariate probability, which is by essentially doing the product of all the clicks. And then we use this object for modeling a prediction and for a casting, because that's what I said before. Once we have the joint probability distribution, we have everything we need. Okay. So we are at good time. And uh, let me refer to something that we might have a bit more familiar. And uh, uh, what is predictive modeling? Predictive modeling, as I said, in general, is to uh, find the uh, joint probability distribution function or the conditional probability distribution function. And of course, once we have it, we can calculate quantity like the conditional expectation value, okay? So it will be the integral or the sum of the variable or the set of variable x given the probability of this variable condition it to something else. Something else might be in the past, this mean minus, and this will be therefore a forecasting. And this expectation value, by the way, is what we call regression. And uh, uh, if this probability here is a multivariate Gaussian, then this is the formula of the linear multi the multilinear regression. So the one with the betas, the x, etc., etc., etc. And uh, um, of course, I mean, it's not enough to know the, uh, the expectation value. We want to know also the uncertainty. And in this case, uh, what I propose, what I think is the best measure, measure to do, is to do it uh, to introduce an entropic measure. So to, do, uh, to introduce the entropy of, actually the conditional entropy of the variable uh, given the other. So this is the, what is left of the uncertainty when uh, some uh, aspects are known. And in fact, there is, a, 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 um, when we do predictive modeling, Actually, there is a, there is a quantity that is, that is very natural to use, is what I said, what is left 
of uncertainty in this variable given the past of the variable itself minus what is left of the variable within the past of the variables and of another variable okay this is so how much this variable a the past of this variable x a is describing is taking off of the uncertainty of the variable x b and this is what is called a transfer entropy this is a very general measure that however if we do linear modeling this is what is called the granger causality okay granger causality is the transfer entropy for the case of multivariate gaussian so in this sense what we are doing is very standard is extending the linear modeling to non-linear case and is putting emphasis on the multi um, uh, multivariate probability distribution which is the instrument that is describing the system okay now i have i guess 10 minutes and with these 10 minutes i will show you an application actually a couple of application of this methodology to show that i mean indeed i mean this there is something useful here so first of all let me do something recent and uh, uh, let me look at the uh, uk market during COVID, and i will uh, show this method applied to uh, stress testing systemic risk and in general the market structure let me point you out this is done with two colleagues fabio caccioli and isobel seabrook and she is a phd student with us and she's working in the financial conduct authority what i'm talking about is based on essentially on three paper one by procacci and myself published in quantitative finance and another two that have been done during covid by myself and are both in the archive however the results themselves are still unpublished and they will be the subject of a future paper okay what we have been looking we are looking at 229 stocks on the sorry on the uh, FTSE market from a period between january 2005 and may 2020 and this is a plot of the uh, prices and this is a plot of the average price uh, first of all, what we did, we divided the uh, data set, the period, into uh, um, periods and we did it by following the Procacci paper. So I don't have the time to describe this, but this is essentially, this is a clustering done over time. So this is not something done by hand, it's done automatically. And what is important that is done on the network. So we first build a network, a probabilistic description of the system on each period of time, taking random period of time, and then we see how make how this probability description match, and we combine the, the period of time that have the best similar probabilistic description. The number of cl cluster is an input variable, all the rest is completely automatic. And we see one interesting point here is that the COVID period is uh, uh, a completely different uh, cluster from all the other periods and in particular it is completely different from the um, um, crash period of 2008. Uh, these are the uh, market states so what we identify as from a probabilistic point of view as the, uh, the market state in the various periods, the various periods are the one so the red the the red, the chine, et cetera, et cetera. And these are the, um, the data are there. This is the COVID one, and this is the uh, crisis uh, 2008. By the way, these are pretty well that you don't see much, but they are relatively pretty picture. It's not the question of showing, of describing the market here. We are talking about something pretty different. These are the essential structure of the formula that define the joint probability distribution of this system and for instance what it means is that this variable here 
is not directly the conditionally dependent from this variable here, is instead conditionally dependent from those variables there, okay? So we have, uh, uh, it is a description of the conditional dependence between variables. The colors are the sector. You see sector do aggregates, uh, some better, some worse, depending on the case. So these pictures are the representation of the joint probability distribution of my system, which as, we, as I said, this is all I need. And uh, uh, that's, that's what I just said. And from that, we can calculate what we want. And in particular, in this case, I show something pretty simple. I show a, a, a graph of impacting and impacted. And in particular, in terms of uh, um, fraction of uh, uh, losses, that are in the system by uh, the impacting is, okay, if I stress one sector, what's the average loss in the entire system? And instead the impacted is if I stress the entire system except that sector, what the loss in the sector. By the way, let me stress, uh, and this is uh, in this paper, this measure is pretty general, is not limited to linear modeling, Gaussian modeling. This is valid for any elliptic, uh, this elliptical distribution function, which means uh, included, which is a pretty large family, which include the, um, the student distribution in particular. And let's focus a little bit on this one. And we see that is the present COVID crisis. We see that there is a lot of impact, impacting and impacted, and everything is shifted toward the high with respect, for instance, to the immediately previous period that was essentially a good bear period. And in particular, let's have a look of a couple of variable of sector, sorry. One is the real estate. Real estate moved from being uh, from here, being below the middle line, to be here above the middle line. More interesting, healthcare moved here from relatively low uh, position, which I cannot find in this moment. I see healthcare was here, so it moved higher, almost doubled the impact. Uh, and uh, is uh, instead, uh, I mean, uh, is more or less, uh, well, it's a bit larger in the impacted. So it's been a little bit impacted, it's hugely impacting now. And as you can see, the, the scales are the same, so you can see very well that everything moves up in the uh, impact. Um, of course, there is a, la a lot of extra work that can be done. This is an example. I don't want to go uh, any further here because I have only four minutes, well, less three minutes left. So let me show a couple of other things. I mean, I put there as a reference in the sense that we will, uh, I mean, so they are in the slides, you can look at them. These are another example, a completely different example. We look at the transfer of uncertainty between continents by looking across markets and we see what's happening during different periods and starting from the 90s and ending up in the uh, 2000s, including the crisis, and we see the increase of interconnectivity in the network. We see the increase of the complexity and uh, uh, be careful again, I mean, these are not only pictures. Here we are, uh, we are having a complete description of the joint probability distribution. So we can do aggregation, disaggregation, we can calculate all quantities that we want and we can do it with precision. Another thing that we can do with the method that I introduced is uh, that we can easily mix uh, the monthly, the daily, and the quarterly data, and this is an example, for again, for the UK market. So I am uh, back with my face, and let me come to conclusion. Well, I have to put back out my face, otherwise you cover it. Uh, so we are solving an inverse problem. 
if we have more data, we don't have any easier problem to solve. Uh, uh, networks are great tools, are great tools to solve uh, this problem, in particular to solve the tree problem that was the, um, indeed, the, the curse of dimensionality, the sparsity, and uh, the problem or the inverse problem in general. Uh, we can build the network that are, and this is the main message of the talk, we can make build networks that are directly associated with the probabilistic modeling of the system. And once we have the joint probability of the system, we can do whatever we wish. And I show you a small example. Uh, there is a lot more to be done. I mean, unfortunately, we are very busy in doing many things. And so we don't do many other things. We are very welcoming collaboration. And I leave you with a list of links and papers that can be of your, hopefully are of your interest. Uh, some other paper that are not here have been mentioned during the talk and are linked there. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the conference. Bye-bye.